Now that we're in October, we thought it would be a good time to review a Halloween-themed escape room game, one of the holiday hijinks games from Grand Gamers Guild, who we have to thank for dropping off a review copy with us last summer. The Pumpkin Problem is the third game in the Holiday Hijink series of escape room-style puzzle games from Jonathan Schaefer and our friends at Grand Gamers Guild. This is a small pack, 18-card game that can be played in about an hour. It's designed for one or more players of any age. This particular puzzle has a rating of two out of three for difficulty. This is the third Holiday Hijinx game, and coincidentally, the third one we've played and yeah. reviewed. Check out our reviews of the Independence Incident and the Birthday Burglary for our thoughts on other 18-card escape room in a box games from Jonathan. Now, in addition to the cards you get with the game, you also need access to the web to be able to log into a companion app. Uh, this is where you're going to get the story of the game and enter your, enter your answers to the clues and puzzles you'll face. You're also going to want some scrap paper, and for this particular game, I also recommend having some card sleeves and rut erase markers. Now, just like the previous Holiday Hijinks games we've reviewed, the web app page also includes a detailed step-by-step -step clue system, as well as mm -hmm. a set of useful information, including common cipher-like maritime flags, letter substitution. Everything is self-contained here, and you won't need any outside information. You don't even really need to know that much about Halloween to play or solve the game. Now, this is set on Halloween night, and the night of trick-or-treating is under threat. Everyone's candy has gone missing, and even the treats you were planning to give out yourself. It's up to you to save Halloween by finding the missing candy and figuring out who the culprit is. Due to the fact this is a puzzle-based game, we didn't record any form of unboxing or anything as we didn't want to spoil any of the surprises. Now, the pumpkin problem is just a small shrink-wrapped card pack that folds open and holds 18 cards. This pack gives you the instructions on where to start and a QR code that'll get you to the web app. Card quality is excellent, and the game does a good job of using only 18 double-sided cards. While you can write on the cards, and trust me, you're going to want to, you don't have to destroy anything to play through this game. We strongly suggest sleeving the cards and using wet erase markers to help preserve. Now, not only that, as Deanna pointed out, if you are planning on just not worrying about it and writing on the cards, they're that kind of plasticky material that's difficult to write on. Sleeves and a fine point wet erase work great for us. So how do you play this Halloween-themed card game? So getting going with any of the Holiday Hijinx games is pretty simple. You open up the card pack, you take out the cards, be sure not to look at them, open up the web app, select the game you're currently playing, hit start, and do what it says. This is going to have you grab one of the cards from the deck, flipping it over and reading it. From that point on, it's pretty clear what you should be doing, which involves solving a puzzle and putting your solution into the app. If you've got someone who always shuffles cards, don't let them open the back. So honestly, if they're shuffled, it's not that big a deal because you're sorting through finding numbers anyway. The web app then continues the story and has you finding and flipping over more cards, giving you more puzzles and more clues to enter, leading to more cards and more puzzles. If at any point you get stuck, there's a clue system in the app that was created in a way that not only gives you a bit of information at a time, so as not to spoil things. Now with this particular game, we didn't feel the need to use any clues. But don't be afraid to use them if you need them. In many cases, all you need is that little push to let you know what you should be looking at or what things tie together. For this particular game, the main clue you may need is knowing which cards go together. Don't let a feeling of failure due to using hints lead to long moments of frustration. It's just not worth it. As you get deeper into the deck, you will learn more of the story and eventually enter the final solution and get your reward. You were then given a score based on how long you took and how many hints you used. Now, we ended up with a 4.5 this time. And to be fair, that's what we've gotten on every single one of these so far. But that's with no clues. But we did get one wrong answer while going through due to not paying quite as much attention as we should have on a particular logic puzzle. Now, that's pretty much all I want to say as far as how the pumpkin problem plays, as most of the fun of these games is the exploration of discovery that comes through playing through them. Now, you played this one with D and the girls. What did you think? So this was a very solid, very puzzle-filled escape room in a box experience. Story's cute. The puzzles are particularly suited, though, to more than one player. Each step of the game, each kind of stage, we were presented with two or three different problems or things to look into. And each of them was separate from each other. So that meant we can each work on our own part of the puzzle, steaming, teaming up when needed. This made the pumpkin problem so far the best holiday hijinks game for groups that we've played. 
So no problem with too few or too many players. No, not at all. Uh, in this case, we had four. I would say in this for this particular game, three seems to be the sweet spot. Like you tended to be presented with three problems with four of us, just two of us paired up, which actually worked well as one of my daughters, as many of you know, have some learning disabilities. So it works. With, she likes to have someone to work with in the first place. Now, as for the puzzles themselves, they were a good mix. Uh, there was nothing we were stuck on very long. Every now and then we were looking at things kind of the wrong way and we ended up coming back to a solution usually after showing it to someone else and them going, oh, what you missed is this fact. It really is surprising to see what they managed to achieve with only 18 cards time mm -hmm. and time again, without the games feeling repetitive. Though I guess that by separating them out by holidays, can someone help with that? Uh... Yeah. Now, one of the most impressive parts, too, is how the designer used these 18 cards to be double that, really, really being 32 cards because they use both sides of the cards. In every game we played, the card backs have been much more than just a way of numbering everything and sorting things. Now, I don't want to spoil anything, but I particularly enjoyed how the backs in this particular game came out to play. Well, you'll just have to throw down that big holiday hijinks money for that info. Now, one difference from the previous holiday hijinks games we played is that we didn't need any specific knowledge of Halloween here. You don't even really need to know the traditions at all to get what's going on. It's all described pretty clearly on the cards. And unlike the last two games, there's no like background info on the app. For example, when we were playing Independence Incident, there was all kinds of things like Battle Limbs of the Republic. There's none of that you're going to find here. There's no there's just the the additional info. That's the same stuff that's been in all the games like the ASCII code. So it's good to know what ASCII 0153 is, but don't worry about who Sam Hain is. Overall, I can't help but be impressed by the variety we've seen in the entire series of these games. This particular game was basically three sets of puzzles each of which was unique and varied and unrelated to the other. So you get a, presented a bunch of puzzles, you solve them, then it presents a bunch more puzzles, and then you solve those and they present a bunch more. They're all, of course, very much tied to the Halloween theme. Now, where Independence Incident kind of felt like playing through an interactive story. It was, it was almost like, not a which way, but like you had to solve the solution to get to the next part of the story. And the birthday burglary really felt like a point and click style adventure where you're trying different things with different things to find solutions. This felt more like an escape room though one based on puzzles and solving puzzles and logic, not on codes or physical manipulation. Well, three down so far and plenty more holidays to go. We'll see if they can keep surprising us with different gameplay from only 18 cards. So at this point, of the three holiday hijinks games we played, I think this was the quickest to get through. We found this easier than the other ones. Um, and by far the best with more than one player. Again, I, I think three is probably the sweet spot, but don't be afraid of like, say, four or five, as long as you don't mind pairing up. And I would think this was probably also the most accessible to the widest audience. This was it's not that the others weren't family friendly, but this seemed more family friendly, which is just a very fun experience to play with my kids and my wife. The only thing I would have changed is I would have rather played this. And I think the kids definitely would have preferred to play this on Halloween. But if I did that, I couldn't be here telling you that it's worth picking up before Halloween for yourself. So there you go. Another solid pack of only 18 cards. If you're a fan of Escape Room and a box style games, you really can't go wrong with the Holiday Hijinx series so far. I am the pumpkin problem is no exception to that. These are great low priced puzzle games that are great for killing an hour with friends and family or to play on your own. Due to the theme of this particular one, this is great for playing on Halloween night while the kids are out trick or treating or while giving out candy or perhaps as a way to unwind at the end of the night while the kids are all hopped up on the candy. With the form factor and the price, they are just a standout product and a fantastic line of puzzle games from Grand Gamers Guild with a growing selection of holidays to choose from. Now, if puzzle games aren't your thing, I can't see this like winning you over in any way. It's, it's not doing anything really new or innovative that we haven't seen before. There's nothing here that's going to wow you if you didn't already enjoy these kind of games. That said, I'm pretty sure you could probably get a jaded gamer to play it with you on the right name due to the theme. And of course, there are plenty of people out there who will go wild for anything Halloween. Yeah. So these can make great gifts as well. And you don't need to be a hardcore hobby gamer for these games. Now, the one idea I had that I think would be awesome, if I won a lottery, this is what I'd be doing this year. If I could afford it, I would love to give out copies of this game for Halloween. If you happen to be one of those households and only gets like five to ten kids or something, you might want to consider this. Like, how cool would it be to come as a kid to come home with a fully playable hour long game experience at the end of the night? 
I don't know what to think about that, because as a kid, I think the full-sized candy bar probably would have gone over better. Mm. But if you've got a party of grown-ups, well, that's it for our look at the Pumpkin Problem, a holiday hijinks escape room game from Grand Gamers Guild. So far, we've really been digging these small, holiday-themed puzzle games. You know us, we're always trying to mix some gaming in with our holiday celebrations. But what about you? Do you have any holiday gaming traditions? Tell us all about it in the comments below. All right, before you go, I want to call out two things. One, if you enjoyed this review and the other content we put out each week, please consider tipping the bellhop at patreon.com slash tabletop bellhop. Second, if you've got time, I invite you to check out my written review of The Pumpkin Problem and the other holiday hijinks games over at our blog at tabletopbellhop.com.